What do you need to know before getting started in investing in property? Well, first of all, you need to establish why you're doing it. You need to know what your end goal is. And then you need to remember that not setting goals has a major consequence to it. The consequence or cost of not having these goals set is that when times get tough, you're gonna forget why you're doing this and you give up early and you won't make the real money that true property investors that invest for the long term make. There are three things that I believe that you need to establish for your property investment goal. First thing is what you want, how much of it you want, and when you want it by. I've surveyed a number of property investors from around the country to look at what they want out of property investment, and it comes into four main categories. Passive income, to grow their wealth, retirement, and no money worries. Now, you might aspire to all four of these goals, but you need to select one that resonates with you to make it your main focus when setting your goals. So let's look at an example. Let's say you want passive income. So that's what you want. Now, how much of it do you want? If you're on 100K now, you might want to replace that. So you want $100,000, that's how much of it you actually want to achieve. And then when you want to achieve it by, let's say you want to get that by the time you turn 60, and that's in 20 years. So 20 years is the time frame that we're working towards. So again, you want passive income, you want 100000 a year to replace your existing income, and you want it in 20 years' time. So how does this translate into a property portfolio goal? So if you want $100,000 of today's money, you need to factor in inflation, because remember, every year that goes on, your money doesn't buy as much. So $100,000 of today's money is actually $150,000 in 20 years' time when you factor in inflation. Now, at a net yield of 4%, that means you need $3.75 million worth of property completely freehold. Now we use a 4% net yield because if you buy a high yielding property and it's paid off, then generally speaking, you should be able to net 4% after all of your operating costs are paid. So just to use some simple numbers for this, if you've got a million dollar investment property at a 7% gross yield, that works out to be $70,000 a year in income, and you might have $30,000 worth of operating costs, that leaves $40,000 of income that you can use. What I mean by investment properties are properties that you can rent out, and this doesn't include your family home, because whilst you own your home and it's an asset from that column, it's not a true asset because it doesn't generate an income. Now I appreciate that this is a bit of a back of the envelope calculation. If you actually want to delve into the numbers in more specific detail, what you'd actually do is work out what your end goal is and then look at what you've got now. So that could be things like savings, that could be things like your KiwiSaver, it could be whether or not you're going to receive a superannuation when you retire if retirement income was your goal. And you deduct these things from what your target goal is and then you'd find a way of filling the gap in the shortfall. Now you need to remember that property investment is a long-term game and you're not gonna be an investment mogul overnight. It does take a while. But the long-term goal is what's gonna motivate you to push through in those hard times and get through the challenging times to make the real wealth that you build in long-term property investment. So what is the next step? Firstly, choose the goal which most resonates with you. Is it passive income? Is it retirement? Or is it building long-term wealth? And then use one of the tools that we'll link to figure out how you're tracking right now and what the gap is in terms of your existing plan.